Hey, what's up? This is Nick with Ultimate Motorcycling, and today we just got done, well actually, we just got done with two days of riding the brand new 2024 Suzuki GSX-8R. So as you guys know, this is the follow-up to the recently released 8S, which is their new middleweight uh, motorcycle. And it really launched the, the latest 7765 parallel twin powered middleweight platform for the Japanese brand, which is super crucial for not only the uh, for not only Suzuki, but of course the the industry as a whole, because this is a space that is growing pretty rapidly. It's getting a lot of attention, and to be honest, middleweight bikes are just incredibly fun. So I understand the appeal. Now, getting back to the topic at hand, this is the 8R version, and really what separates it from that naked 8S bike is the fact that it comes with a full fairing and a little bit more aggressive riding position. Now there are a handful of changes within that, but Realistically, you're still getting that same 776cc parallel twin engine, the same chassis, and a lot of carryover components that just add some more sporting flavor into the mix. Now, we're going to get into this first ride of view, and I want you guys to stick around. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about what we did with the 8R. Now, Suzuki is positioning this bike as a sporty all-around sport bike. There's really no other way to put it. It really falls into that tradition of, you know, a, a Swiss army knife for the road in a lot of ways. And I know there are a lot of sport touring motorcycles and ADV or adventure sport touring bikes that could also be described as such, but this really leans into a more traditional GSX sport lineage. And you know, for a lot of guys and gals out there, I think they're going to resonate with it because it really does just tap into that youthful sentiment that we all like about sport riding. So we did some some miles on the road, uh, rode through Julian, California, and you know some of the surrounding areas, Borrego Springs, and then we also came to the track day. And what we've sort of discovered through our our efforts is the the fact that yeah, it really does fit the bill as a versatile product that can that can do a lot of different things pretty well. Now, first thing I'd like to dive into is of course that 776cc parallel twin engine. Uh, you know, recently released, as I mentioned, it's also powering the Nistrom 800. But what I really enjoy about this thing is, you know, it's, it's incredibly user-friendly. It really taps into a lot of what Suzuki tends to lean on in terms of their, their rider experience. What Suzuki has done with this power plant in particular is made something that has a lot of really approachable, user-friendly, low-end torque that feeds into very tractable mid-range power. And it does so in a way that doesn't shock or scare or you know anything like that. It's just an incredibly good experience for riders that are going to be graduating from, say, beginner bikes and then joining that, that inter intermediate level rank. And of course, riders that are joining, rejoining the motorcycle fold. So it's something that is, is very inviting and forgiving, which is an important thing to note. Now, as far as horsepower number goes, Suzuki North America is actually reporting horsepower numbers, which is pretty rare for a, a Japanese subsidiary in the United States. Uh, they're reporting, if I check my handy dandy notes, 81-ish uh, horsepower and 57 foot-pounds of torque. So you got something that has some good bite. But like I said before, it's not delivered in a super hyper aggressive way. If you're looking for comparisons, you know, something like the Yamaha YZF-R7 or the Aprilia RS660 are going to be direct competitors to this bike right here. And I'd say that those two power plants get at things with a bit more bite. However, I'd say this guy right here has a bit more broad spectrum in terms of its torque delivery and the fact that it really speaks to a massive, massive spread of riders and skill levels. Now moving into a couple other little features, it does come with an up-down quick shifter, which we do like to see on, on motorcycles these days. And at this price point, it is something that uh, I, I do appreciate. Now, in regards to the shifting, the gearbox itself, quite good. And that's kind of a Suzuki thing. They tend to, they tend to get that right. The quick shift function going up, no complaints there, I think it's fine. Down, that's a little sticky if you're being hyper aggressive with it. Um, you know, so for the racetrack, you'll see in the video, I'm probably reaching for the clutch and just going old school. That said, it's not too big of a problem. I would like to see the algorithm updated a little bit, smoothed out to just really make use of what 
could be an excellent addition to the bike. That said, shifting overall, super positive. Now going into some of the other electronic features, we do have a full TFT display. Uh, you know, that's carried over from some of the other 8S models. Looks good, super easy to read, easy to navigate, kind of kind of nothing to talk about there. Related to that, you do have your three ride modes. And with the, the power delivery, you know, you have your A, B, and C modes. The power delivery here, again, it really plays into the, the motorcycle strengths. It is that user-friendly, you know, fun, engaging motorcycle, but it doesn't take things too far. So good fueling across the board. And there is a decent spread in personality between A, B, and C. A being the most aggressive, C being essentially rain mode. Now you do have uh, traction control and ABS. Traction control is defeatable and has four different levels. Honestly, even at the racetrack, never really came on. Um, you know, with sticky Dunlop uh, Q5S tires, didn't, didn't seem to piss it off too much. And uh, on the street, it only, it only flashed up when I hit a couple patches of sand and some damp spots where, you know, things got a little hairy. We did mention tires, but it's something worth talking about again. In standard trim, the GSX 8R is equipped with Dunlop Sportmax Road Sport 2 tires, which is an older mileage conscious model from Dunlop that yields adequate grip on the road. Upgrading those along with the rubber brake lines and moving to a higher spec brake pad would be an appreciable bump in performance without breaking the bank. However, for the track day, we opted for Dunlop's Sportmax Q5S track day tire, which as you can expect, provides a high level of grip, much improved chassis feedback, and allows us to really test the true performance potential of the GSX 8R. That said, I do like the fact that it has an electronics package with TC and ABS. The ABS is non-adjustable, it is what it is. But even in a racetrack setting, and although Chuckwalla is not you know, the most hardest, the hardest braking uh, racetrack in North America, wasn't getting a lot of ABS intervention, if any, really. Um, it, it's not the same that could be said of what I experienced with the, the, the Yamaha YZ Opera 7, which definitely intervenes. That said, this is where, you know, they've definitely pinched a few pennies here. I would like to see, you know, an axial uh, unit or perhaps some rubber braided, or sorry, steel braided lines and up spec brake pads, because that's gonna improve bite and feel and things like that. That said, they're trying to keep this bike right at that, you know, sub $9,500 mark, and that's one of the ways that they can do it. So not using an IMU, these are, you know, uh, more rudimentary electronics in terms of comparison to more expensive motorcycles, and going with an axial master cylinder, which is upgradable, so not that big of a deal, you know. Again, I'd like to see more, but you can fix it on the other side. Now, when we talk the chassis, we're talking about a motorcycle that weighs 452 pounds. And on the spec sheet, in comparison to your RS660, your R7s, um, uh, you know, Daytona 660s, things like that, that is a bit heavier. Now, the issue is how does it actually work? In the street, this bike handles very, very neutral at low speed, which I think a lot of riders are going to resonate with. They're going to connect with that. It's extremely easy to use, and it tips in very predictably. It wants to tip in. Now, the transition, if you're riding aggressively in the canyons or on the racetrack, that weight comes into play where, despite it being very stable, those lighter bikes will probably flip side to side in a faster manner. Okay, fair enough, there's always compromises between models and setup and yada, yada, yada. Now, changes specific to this bike, you do have a different fork <clears throat> when compared to the GSX 8S. The 8R model that we have here uses a, a Showa single function big piston fork, which is on a lot of different bikes at this point, non adjustable unit, and then you have a, a Showa shock in the rear, preload adjustment only. Okay, so. The thing is, you have to make a bike that can rip a track day, can ride on the road for urban riding, and then also do some sport riding and even touring. Okay, so it's a huge, huge array of activities that don't exactly agree with each other. I would say that this thing is set up from, from the factory with a more compliant suspension setup, but they've done a pretty good job with the damping to keep things nice and controlled even at hotter paces which is nice. Of course, if you were to go into the performance end of the things and, and really focus on that, going to an aftermarket set of suspension, getting your spring set or spring rates dialed in, damping, yada, 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 that's gonna be a benefit for any motorcycle. 
But the fact is what you got works really well on the road in the sense that you get good ride quality, good compliance, and it's a very balanced motorcycle. That's probably a buzzword you're gonna hear a lot here. Now, in terms of raw changes, as I mentioned before, different fork, they've actually slightly decreased that spring rate in the fork compared to the 8S and then upped the damping a whole lot. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it has a lot more stuff on the front of it, so it's got to compensate for weight. But you're also biasing that weight forward a little bit because these faux clip-ons. Of course, that makes the riding position just a little bit more aggressive. But if you wanted a direct comparison, it's very reminiscent of that Aprilia RS660. And I think, overall, they've done an incredibly good job with the riding position as, as a whole. It's not too low. It's not too tall. Uh, a lot of shorter riders are still going to be able to reach the deck due to the, the very narrow parallel twin packaging and it's not too wristy. It's a bike that can really just ride all day, go rip at a racetrack, and you're still able to be sporty enough while also upright enough to take weight off your wrists. The more aggressive riding position goes hand in hand with the GSX-8R's racier look, thanks to the full fairing we see here. There's a significant increase in wind protection when compared to the naked GSX-8S model, creating a cozy cockpit free of major buffeting when you're on the road or track. It's a compact bike for sure when you're tucked behind the windscreen, but I wouldn't dare say that my five foot 10 inch frame feels cramped either. The one downside that I will say in the performance uh, you know, aspect is the fact that with comfort comes lower, lower rear set heights. And of course, at higher lean angles, you are going to be dragging those and customizing them a little bit, depending on your skill level. So, you know, new riders that want to go and rip a track day, you're going to be totally dialed. And even advanced riders that want to go and just have some fun and, you know, just rip some laps and get into it. So that really sums up my thoughts about the 2024 Suzuki GSX-8R course if you guys have any questions go ahead and drop them down below and we'll get you some answers and the last thing i want to remind you guys is go ahead and be safe out there now take care